Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Modeling Minecraft. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the different programs we can use to actually make block models. Um, this won't be a tutorial on how to use the actual program, it'll just be a look at the program and some advantages and disadvantages of each one. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so the first program I want to talk about is Notepad++. Through using Notepad++, you're essentially editing the actual JSON file itself. And this has many advantages as well as many disadvantages. Uh, the main advantages are that you can do anything and everything that is possible within the Minecraft modeling system without having to learn a how to use a new program or worrying if the program has any limitations on what it can do, stuff like that. Uh, the main disadvantages are that you have to learn the whole uh, JSON syntax and how the Minecraft modeling system works um, with the JSON syntax format. Um, you also don't have any visual referencing. Um, you can save the file and then reload all textures within Minecraft, which I'll show you how to do. Um, but that's just an extra step that I prefer not to take. I do, however, use Notepad++ um, occasionally. For example, if I make a model and then decide something needs changing, something very little, rather than having to open the program all up again, I can simply open the JSON file in Minecraft. And for example, if I wanted to uh, change the scale or something, I can just quickly go into it and change the numbers here, something like that, and then just save it and it's all good. So the second program I want to talk about is Opal's Model Creator. It was probably the first ever uh, 3D modeling program made specifically for making block models in 1.8. Um, it works really well for just making simple block models like this chair, and it gives you this nice 3D preview as well. Um, it's really, it's also really easy to um, add and move about elements with the um, top, side, and front view faces. Uh, the only downsides are that editing the UV textures and everything isn't isn't always that easy, and the um, user interface isn't as simple as other modeling programs. But I know that a lot of people still use this program, so I thought it was worth listing here as well. Next up, we have Mr. Crayfish's Model Creator. And I definitely recommend this program to anyone new to making block models. It is extremely easy to use with a Techni style user interface. I don't know if you ever use Techni. Um, you have three different tabs over here for element sizing, position, rotation of elements, and a faces tab for the textures and UV editing. UV editing is something that is especially easy in this program. Uh, there are a few disadvantages with this. Um, firstly, it's not complete, it's in a beta stage at the moment, so a few features are missing, but you can expect them to be coming soon. Uh, one of the features that pops to mind is that there aren't any, there isn't a way to set particles without actually editing the JSON file itself. Um, it's also something that is, something that takes a bit of getting used to is working in the sort of 3D space. Um, it's a lot more difficult at first than working in the top side front view. You have to sort of move the camera around a lot to get the angle that you want. But eventually you get the hang of it and it's not so bad. Last but not least, we have BDCraft Cubic Pro made by Sfax. There is a light version, but I'm not even gonna talk about that because it is basically a stripped down demo version. Uh, the Pro version costs around 11 US dollars, I believe. And from my experience, it has been well worth the price. Um, this is probably my favorite, my personal preference in when it comes to modeling. Um, there's so many features that I probably won't be able to outline them all in this video, but I'll give you some examples of things you can do. For example, it has the familiar uh, top front side view. Um, rotating and moving about elements is extremely simple. You have your elements manager over here where you can do things like selecting all the different elements, um, setting their position and moving them, which is really useful, setting their size, scale, randomizing them, 
um, all sorts of different things. You can copy textures and apply them to different um, elements. You have a material manager over here for managing the different textures. You can just double click on a texture and it brings up all the different assets, um, something that we set up last video. Um, another thing that I really like about this is that it has the edits mode. So you can actually change what the model looks like in your hand, on your head, on the floor, in an item frame, in first person, in the GUI, and everything like that. It all has it in here. So that's on the floor. Um, and just all around it has tons of different features, even outside the 1.8 modeling system. For example, you can export it to Java for making mods. You can export it as um, a WareMC file for the WareMC mod. You can both import and export OBJ files. And just all around, it's an awesome program. Oh, there's also um, ways to optimize the models and also to, to minify, the, minify the JSON file, which basically makes the file size a lot smaller, but makes it harder to read. Um, can be useful if you don't want people to be able to edit your file or anything like that. So I got up so caught up in explaining all the good things about uh, Cubic Pro that I forgot to mention any of the disadvantages. Um, there aren't actually that many disadvantages I can think of other than the big one that it is extremely complicated. Um, there's so many buttons and so many different tabs and things. Um, that a lot of it is just overwhelming at first. Similar to how you feel when you first start looking at a program like Blender, for example. It is, it looks really complicated at first. Eventually you do get the hang of it, but you will go through a lot of, uh, what the hell does this button do, stuff like that. And it just takes a bit of, a bit more perseverance with Cubic Pro compared to some of the other programs I mentioned, which have which are a lot simpler and a lot easier to use at first, but maybe don't offer as much, um, what's the word I'm looking for? As many features as um, Cubic Pro does. So that's the end of this episode of Modeling Minecraft. In the next episode, we'll take a look at setting up our own resource pack and actually starting to make our own block models. But until then, let me know what you think of this series so far and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.